Just give me a second. Pal, tell me what you see. A trashed out old house. You better go check out the pool. Yeah? Kurt, be careful. Princess, what about you? What do you see? I don't know. Well, over the entrance there, that bay window, that's your room. With a bath. My own bath? Danny, please don't tell me you bought this house. I didn't buy this house. I wanted you to see it first. Well, I've seen it, more or less. Honey, the house is in foreclosure. We can get fantastic terms from the bank. Look, I made a sketch. Yeah, but what about that? Well, we'll paint it and we'll fix it. Can't you dream? Dad, there's no pool? No, not yet, but there's room for one, isn't there? Come on, guys. I, I love it. Hi, Dad. Have Let's fun. go. Sarah, start your project, okay? I'll be at Patrick's. Goodbye, honey. We have to talk about this. All right. After dinner. But don't be upset. This thing isn't carved in stone, you know. I just wish you hadn't involved the kids. Their heads are spinning. Yeah. You're right. Are you mad? Yes. How mad? Not that mad. Prove it. All right. I'll see you later. All right. Receipts are up. You're doing fine. Why am I so low on cash? Because, look, last year's stock on hand, mm -hmm. this year's. Well, I'm carrying a lot of inventory. Mm. Solution? Stop buying things. <laughs> We're so fun in that. Hey, you got something on your mind? Danny's looking at another house. How long you been in your place? A year and a half. Denny fixed it up. I like it. In other words, it's bad timing. Maybe, maybe not. Denny has this way of taking on too much. He buys a house we can't afford, and then somehow he makes a profit. 
Man works like a slave. Hey. Hey, Mac. What are you doing here on a Saturday? <laughs> I'm trying to earn a buck. What's your excuse? Oh, I got a new medical building over on Sycamore. Good sized job. Electrical sub is yours if you want it. Well, yes. Well, those are for you then. Mac, the one for you. Oh, shut up. You're doing me a favor. Oh, some guy called for you at the office. Yeah? Who's that? Uh, he didn't leave his name. I guess he figured you still work for me. I gave him your number. All right. Yeah. Dumbest thing I ever did was letting you go out on your own. I should have made you a partner first. Yeah, you should have. Thank you, Mac. Here, let me get that. Oh, thank you. No problem. You live around here? No. No, I'm just visiting. Thank you. Have a good day. No more sharing with Kurt. The Barbarian! <laughs> Good. And what have we here? Mom, check it out. Not another gizmo. It's a good one, too. They're all good. <laughs> Can we show her? Fire it up. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> Ta-da. Oh, neat. I don't know. Seemed like a good deal. It's a great deal. But... It'll take away our cushion. Well, could be a long-term investment. Short term? I don't want to pack again. Oh, Barb, there's just so much more I want to do for us. You will. We will. When we can. I have everything I want right now. Hmm. Mad at me? Not really. Prove it. Mm. Somebody's messing with oh. the car. Oh, Danny. Don't worry about it. Hey, get down. Get down. Hey. 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 You're making a mistake. Everybody just be calm. It's some kind of a mistake. It's just a mistake, all right? Are you Dennis Patrick Trainer? Yeah. I have a warrant for your arrest. I'll charge you willful murder. No! No! It's okay. No! It's okay. No! No! 
Take him to the car and read him his rights. No! Wait! You can't do this. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm afraid I can. Daddy! Call Mark White! Call Mark! Oh, where are they taking him? Hello. I'm Barbara Trainer. My husband was up. How, how is he? Have you seen him? Just for a minute. They're booking him right now. None of this makes any sense. This is what I know. Denny has been linked to a murder that happened in Oregon in 1972. 1972? Linked? How? Well, the Oregon police matched his fingerprints to the murder weapon. What kind of murder weapon? A gun, a revolver. Denny hates guns. He, he wouldn't touch a gun. Good. Maybe that'll help. And tomorrow we go before Judge Weiler. The Oregon police want to extradite him to stand trial. How can we stop it? A judge can deny extradition if a suspect has not been clearly identified, and a 27-year-old computer archive fingerprint is not enough to identify Denny of anything. I'm scared. Now, look. This is just some kind of computer glitch. Don't you worry. We'll make this thing go away. Denny told me he's never even been to Oregon. How are you? Oh, this is a nightmare. Oh, how are the kids? Upset. Damn it. These rotten bastards. They scared our kids half to death. Mark's gonna file a complaint with the judge. Good. You told the kids it's all a mistake. Yes. Jenny, can you think of any reason? No. How can you ask me that? Barb, do you believe me? Yes, of course. What about Mark? Yes, absolutely. State of Oregon versus Dennis Patrick Trainer. Petition for extradition. Counsel. We're ready, Judge. Ready, Your Honor. Proceed. Fairly straightforward, Your Honor. The warrant alleges a murder took place on the night of August 12th, 1972, in Duquesne County, Oregon. The victim, Wayne Kennedy, was shot to death with a 38 caliber handgun. Fingerprints recovered from that gun match those of the accused. On that basis and supported by corroborating evidence, the state of Oregon requests Mr. Trainer be extradited for the purpose of standing trial. Your Honor, there is nothing about this charge that is straightforward. The alleged crime took place 27 years ago. Now, my client assures me that not only has he never met anybody named Wayne Kennedy, he's never even set foot in the state of Oregon. But he has lived here for eight years in this state, and he's a family man and a businessman, and he's never had the slightest trouble with the law. Now, somebody has made a serious mistake. This whole warrant is a travesty. You mentioned corroborating evidence, Mr. Carter? That's correct. Well, then you better present it. Yes, Your Honor. The state would like to call Andrea Darden. Do you know her? Mrs. Darden, have you met Dennis Patrick Trainer prior to today? I have. When? August 12, 1972. Where were you at the time? Hitchhiking on the highway outside of Grants Pass, Oregon. Would you describe the circumstances, please? He and another man, an older man, gave me a ride. I was going to San Diego. And how can you be sure that Dennis Patrick Trainer is a young man you met briefly so many years ago? You showed me a picture. The U.S. Navy photo ID taken less than three months before the murder of Wayne Kennedy. Your Honor, I'd like this photograph entered in evidence. 
This photograph? Yes. Would you uh, read the name on the ID? Dennis Patrick Trainer. Is there anything else, Mrs. Darden, anything specific that would identify the defendant to you beyond a doubt as one of the men who gave you a ride that day? He had a tattoo on his left hand. It was a sailing ship. It was very distinct. Thank you. Petition for extradition is hereby granted. The defendant is remanded into custody. Sarah are only going to be with Mac and Viv for a few days. Viv is going to come by here every day, keep an eye on things. No one's going to touch your stuff. <sighs> We're all going to be back together soon. Dad, too. You sure we can't drive you to the airport? Well, are you doing enough already? Nonsense. It would be good to have kids in the house again. You take care. Whatever you need, whatever it is, we want to help. He lied, Mac. Why would he lie? Good kids. I'll call you tonight. I love you. I love you. How was your trip? I came straight from the airport. Have you seen my husband? This morning. Uh -huh. Bail was denied. What else? Mr. Trainer wasn't very cooperative. He fired us. Why? Ask him. No one can help your husband unless he's willing to help himself. 
Look, you don't know us, Mrs. Trainer. You hired us over the phone, I suspect, because we're local and because our fees are mid-range. We're willing to try, but we can't work in a vacuum. What are you saying? The case against your husband is substantial. According to these documents, your husband claims that he was never in the car with the victim, that he's never been to Oregon until now. That doesn't fit the facts. There are circumstances in your husband's favor. The age of the crime, no eyewitness, his good record since. He should consider a plea. Plead guilty to murder? It's a very old case. They'll be happy to clear it. And we could almost guarantee a reduced charge. Assuming he confesses and gives all the details about how he murdered that man. Thank you for your time. I'm at the Shadow Mountain Inn. You can send your bill there. Mrs. Trainer. Kurt wrote, and Sarah sent a card. The others are mostly from people we know in town. I met with your attorneys. Couple of damn kids. You fired them. Yeah, I'm going with the public defender. We'll make some kind of deal, cop some kind of plea, and just clean and simple and get it over with. Why? What did you do? Danny? Tell me. I was in San Francisco. I was tending bar back in 72. And I'd been out of the Navy a couple months. It was an okay job, but I was restless and I decided to move on. Hey, how you doing? All right. The, uh, shot a bourbon? Sure thing. It's quiet, huh? Yeah, it won't be in about an hour. Yeah? That's when all the touring boats get back. Let me feel, make that a double. Double? Oh, let me see. <laughs> nice, where'd you get it? Hawaii. Service. Yeah, just out. Navy. <laughs> Swabies, we gotta stick together, right? Really? Mm-hmm. Where'd you serve? Every inch in the Mediterranean. <laughs> That's ancient history. How about you? Good gig here? Decent money up there, right? A lot of action from the ladies. <laughs> yeah, but I'm actually gonna be leaving in a couple days. Where to? Seattle. I got a good job prospect up there. Sounds good. What's the damage? Three dollars. Keep it. Thanks. Listen, if you want, I can give you a ride part of the way. I'm heading up to Portland. I wouldn't mind the company. When? Tomorrow. Really, that'd be great. Except I gotta clear it with the boss. I told him I'd be working through Friday. So. I'll tell you what, it works out. I'll pick you up here tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. Thanks. I don't know. But... Sure. Hey, kid. You hear that? That's opportunity knocking. Hey, 
you made it, huh? Yeah. Come on, let's get the show on the road. So, uh, maybe later. You're a quiet one, huh? <laughs> Sorry. No, please, don't apologize. Better than having somebody yap at me the whole time. My old lady was like that. No, thank you. Are you married? <laughs> Do I look like a total idiot? Nah, we were shacking up. Look in the cloak, Paul, will you? Yeah. It doesn't bother you, does it? No. Didn't think so. An old service man like you. Pick it up. Careful, it's loaded. That's just my belly gun. This is my stop. Hmm? Nice. Come on. Sunny boy, this must be our lucky day. Hey, where are you headed, miss? San Diego. Hop in. San Diego, huh? I used to live down there when I was in the Navy. My buddy here just got out. What's your name? Andrea. Kid, where are your manners? Will you get out and open the door for Andrea, please? Hey. Hi. Sorry we can't take you all the way to San Diego, but we can get you started at least. So what's in San Diego? My boyfriend. He's in school there. Weren't you driving the other way on the highway? As a matter of fact, we were. You know, I saw you standing there and I said to myself, pretty girl traveling all along? That could be trouble. So my buddy and I decided to uh, be good Samaritans. How about a beer? You want to pop one for me? Is that it? We have to stock the supplies, kids. Anyway, we're having some fun, right?
We're in, you know. She's got a boyfriend, Wayne. You believe that, huh? <laughs> you got a lot to learn, my friend. Just pay attention. We'll both get some. I'm not interested. <sighs> Kid, is there something wrong with you? Wait here. She's not in the can. Have you seen her? No. Hey, cut it out. Excuse me? You got something to say to me? Hey, look, you don't want to get involved in this, okay? Go back inside. You guys got one man to get out of here before I call the cops. Oh, really? I refused to get back in the car, and he drove off and left me there. What did you do? I took the bus back to San Francisco. It's the last I heard about it until the police showed up. Well, you didn't do anything wrong. Why lie? Because I read about Wayne's murder. My fingerprints were on the gun. I knew that they would blame me. I was terrified. I'll talk to the district attorney's office. Tell him you wanted to change your statement. I blew it. In their eyes, I'm already a perjurer. Why should they believe anything I have to say now? Because it's the truth. There's nothing else. Mother, son. Art DeMarco? Barbara Trainer. You know Detective Bonnie? Unfortunately, yes. Coffee? No, thank you. I hear you're without counsel. Hopefully that won't be necessary. Why are you here, Mrs. Trainer? My husband would like to change his statement. He told me Excuse my... me. You understand that anything said in this room is on the record? Yes, I do. Please go on. My husband was in that car with Wayne Kennedy. They met in San Francisco and Mr. Kennedy offered him a ride to Seattle. My husband lied about never being in Oregon. There was a loaded revolver in the glove compartment. My husband saw it and he handled it with Mr. Kennedy's permission. The important thing is, there's the explanation for your fingerprint evidence, which has nothing to do with my husband being a murderer. He is not. Mrs. Trainer, Detective Bonnie has made me aware of all the relevant facts. What you say is interesting. But assuming it's true, it does nothing to absolve your husband. Why not? I prefer not to discuss details of the case without an attorney for Mr. Trainer present. You're going to prosecute him for murder? The charges stand. Get yourself a lawyer, Mrs. Trainer. You'll need one. Gentlemen. Mrs. Trainer, What is it with you, detective? Can I buy you some coffee? Some sort of obsession? A stain on your perfect record? I owe you an apology for the way the arrest went down. Warren arrived late. We'd been waiting all day. Hell, I've been waiting 27 years. I'd be lying to you if I told you we weren't ready and eager to kick your door down. But then I saw your kids and all, and... Well, we should have waited until the morning. I apologize. But not for arresting my husband. No, ma'am. You waited 27 years to find the truth. That's right. Well, then we both want the same thing. Can't you tell me what you know? Look, it's all in the files. <sighs> Wayne Kennedy's body was found a little before noon on the 13th. Been dead about 12 hours. One shot to the chest, another at close range to the brain. Put an all-points bulletin out on his car. Turned up a couple of days later in San Francisco, abandoned. Mr. Trainer, ask yourself whether 
whether your husband's worth this kind of loyalty. Whole families get dragged under when something like this happens. It'd be a shame if it happens to yours. Then help me. <clears throat> a liquor store clerk described the man he saw with Wayne at 10 p.m. the night of the murder. He described you. When the car was found in San Francisco, your fingerprints were on the steering wheel in Wayne's blood. How could you keep this from me? This changes everything. I hardly know you anymore. Maybe I never did. Did you kill that man? you. Don't ever crowd me again. You want to tell to me or you want to tell to the cops? Let's go. Whoa, look what we got here. There was another girl? No. It was the first hitchhiker. The one we didn't pick up before. She said her name was Sherry. She just graduated high school in Sacramento. Was on her way to Eugene to visit her aunt. Of course, her father had given her money to take the bus, but she thought she'd save it by hitchhiking. Wayne thought he'd died and gone to heaven. So wait, they're both teachers? Yeah. Dad teaches English and mom's math. Which one do you take care of? No. Neither, I guess. I actually want to be a dancer. Really? Yeah. I'll tell you what. You got the legs for it, all right? <laughs> well, I don't know. Mom says I have to get a degree first, and then I could try dancing if I still want to. Yeah, yeah. Come here, take a look at this kid. Look at you. Ow! You're hard as a rock! You break a man in two! And yeah, don't worry about him. He's been away at sea too long if you know what I mean. Yeah, you don't look very happy. Oh, okay. He's just a little sour. Oh, are you sour? Forget about him, will you? I'm sweet enough for the two of us. Hey, you want some wine? Um... Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, of course you do. Kid, okay, give me one of those bottles of wine up here. Come on. <sighs> Ta-da! Thanks. Atta girl, atta girl. <laughs> Come on, don't be bad. Drink, drink, drink. More? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's my girl. Oh! All right, I'm hey. taking orders. Who wants what? Beer? Vino? Oh, what, what do you want? I, I need something to eat. Um, ice cream here. Ice cream? Mm. <laughs> what do I get? Huh? You know, for uh, the ride and the ice cream. Drop it, Wayne. I got it. Give me a kiss. It's so bad. <laughs> stop. Please! No! Stop! Wayne, weren't we gonna go inside? Yeah. We're going inside. We are. We're going inside. Ice cream, right? Can you stay right here now? I was 
nodding in and out, dizzy, hoping I wouldn't get sick. Sherry fell asleep, and I remember seeing her face in the glow of the dash. She looked so young. Since you two were so big, we'd stop there for the night and you know, go on in the morning. You like horses? I guess. Good. Because <laughs> they got some views, man. There's no regular road into this place. That's the long way around. This is a shortcut. Are we stopping? We're calling nature, baby. You coming, kid? You coming or not? I'll be right back. I don't believe there's any horse ranch up here. Well, <clears throat> that'd make you smarter than you look. Look, kid, here's the deal, okay? I got some business with that little girl back there. I want you to wait here, okay? When I'm done, I'll come back and get you. You can have your turn. No! yourself kid you're crowding me again and what if she doesn't want to then I'll convince her that's rape Wayne you'll go to prison only if she's around to talk about it you're not touching her She means that much to you, is it? Huh? Yeah, she does. Then why don't you say something? Fine, fine. told me so many stories, I don't know what to believe anymore. Guard. Where are you going? Home. To take care of our children.
after we eat, I want you guys to help me clean up the house. There you go. Mmm. Looks good. So, how's things with Mac and Viv? I heard Mac let you use the skill saw. Yeah. Sounds like fun. I missed you and Daddy. I know, honey. Your father's gonna have to go to trial. See, I told you, he's not coming home. Well, not right away. Did he kill that man they say he did? No. So why don't they let him go? Because the person's death is very serious. No matter who's to blame. That's what a trial is for, to settle things. Once and for all. When are you going back to Oregon? I don't know. I'm just happy to be home. I missed you guys so much, I could hardly stand it. Your daddy misses you, too. He loves you. He thinks about you every day. He never wrote back. Why didn't you call me? Because I just got in last night. Hi. Don't hi me. I got this in the mail. Kids, take a break. Coffee? Yeah. These are good names, good people. Any one of them could do the job for you. You're my bookkeeper. I want you. I'm not available. Till when? Do you think I want to lose you? And my other clients? Leave him, Barbara. Patrice. You can't tell me that thought hasn't crossed your mind. You know he's guilty of sin. I don't know that. Why else would he lie? He only lies, he got something to hide. Not now, honey. I'm sorry. Pick one. How long can you go without an income, paying lawyer's fees and still survive? Everybody in this town's worried about Danny. I'm worried about you. Don't go down with the ship, Barbara. For their sakes. Come on, get that thing forward. You want a coffee? Oh, I'm up to here. How's he holding up? Hey, what's wrong? Something happened between you two? That's complicated, Mac. If I don't believe him this time, I... I don't know what to think anymore. Why? Because he lied in court? Because he lied to me. In court, out of court. Every day of our lives together. Well, you know the details. You're on the inside, I'm not. But I know Denny. And I trust him. Now, if that makes me a fool, so be it. You're no fool. Here. Take this. This is money. It's a cashier's check. 
I can't. It's not for you, it's for Denny, for his defense fund. He doesn't have a defense fund. Well, he does now. What are your options? You gonna take a second mortgage on the house, sell the truck, or clean out the savings account? Uh uh. This way he has something to come back to. It's an investment in our future work together. How can you be so sure it'll turn out that way? Well, I'm counting on you to make it happen. Father's done things I don't understand. What if you did understand? I don't know. Could you try, please? I'm ready to hear it. All of it. Now. What are you doing, kid? Don't call me kid. I don't like it. Get on your knees. Put the gun away. Get on your knees! All right, all right. Just take it easy, okay? Where's the other gun? It's under the seat. I checked. It's there. I don't have it. Take off your shirt. What if I don't? Hey, I, I, uh, okay, all right? All right? Where is she? She's gone. Tell me! I forget about her, okay? Because she's gone for good. And I gotta tell you, I really missed out. You gotta have a doctor look at that kid before you bleed to death. 
How could you hurt her? I told you, kid, didn't I? I'm just a dirty old man. I can't help myself! No! <laughs> I was wounded, Wayne was dead, and so was Sherry. How can you be so sure Sherry is dead? Because I looked for her until it got light. I called her name over and over again. But I knew she wasn't going to answer. The brush was so thick up there, he could have buried her anywhere. How long were you unconscious after he hit you? I don't know. Not long. Maybe she got away. The killing was in the paper for weeks. She'd have called the police. Wayne told me he killed her, all right? Not exactly. Besides, he was a liar. Detective Bonnie said he was never in the Navy or any other branch of service. Everything he told you were lies. He had blood on his shirt, and he had scratches. And if you'd have looked in that man's eyes, you would have known that he was capable of anything. Capable of killing, yes. That doesn't mean he did. I was there, Danny. Shadow Mountain. Exactly as you described. Nothing's changed. The forest is so thick you could hardly turn around. The ground is as hard as a rock. It would take someone a long time to dig a grave deep enough so that nobody would be found. She's dead. Maybe she was unconscious or hurt. Maybe when you called her she ran away, wouldn't you? That is not what happened. She is dead. And I got in the car, Wayne's car, and I drove to San Francisco and I left it. What about the other gun? The one I used? Yes. I threw it in the woods. You've got to tell the police. What is that? You have to draw me a picture of Sherry to the best of your... Are you crazy? Do you think I haven't thought this out? The police don't know there's a Sherry. And if they find another body up there, they'll blame that on me too. So we do nothing? So I make a deal. And you go to jail? What are you telling me? Will you give up? Will you go home and take care of the children and yourself, please? Will you do that for me? Because I don't want you here. This isn't just your problem. It's happening to me and the kids. What happens to you happens to all of us. Whatever it takes, I'm going to find the truth. Good or bad. All of it. Are you ready to... My husband's revised statement of what happened the day and the night of the murder. It's not official. I typed it myself from memory, but it'll get you started. You're rehired. First off, no way there's a body up there. Back then, we'd get one, maybe two murders a year. Bar fights, domestic disputes, you know. No, this was a different animal altogether. I had search parties, dogs, metal detectors, you name it. We searched that mountain inch by inch. And? We found two blood types, one that matched the victim, the other we think is your husband. You'll get a copy of the report when the DNA comes back. Where was the other blood? Some near the edge of the clearing. Where Wayne hit Denny on the head. Some close to the body. Where Denny was shot. All this just proves your husband was there. He admits he was there. Well, he does now. He's making up a story to conform with the evidence. Or telling the truth. That's what we both want, isn't it? The truth? That's why you have to try to find Sherry. There is no Sherry. Prove it. It was a mistake to go to Bonnie. We should have hired an investigator, tried to find the girl ourselves. Why? Because if he looks and doesn't find, he can testify in trial that he tried to verify the defendant's story and he couldn't. could work against us. It was worth the risk. He has the resources to find her. We don't. If she's still alive. She's not buried up there. If she ever existed at all. Are you married? I'm married. Travis is divorced. Why? What if it were you? Your husband, your life. At some point, 
Face facts. The fact that he lied or the fact that you knew him and loved him and trusted him all those years and were wrong. Could you face that fact? I don't know. Neither do I. They want to make a deal. A deal? DeMarco's office, 9 o'clock. Involuntary manslaughter, 5 to 10. He's out in three and a half. Why so generous? It was found in Kennedy's car, preserved in evidence. Well, maybe we should be talking about dismissing the charges completely. He was there. He pulled the trigger. He lied about it under oath. That's my case. Nothing's changed. I had my people collect every yearbook from every high school in the Sacramento area. No graduating seniors named Sherry who look anything like that drawing or whose parents were teachers. Talk to your client. Take it or leave it. Clock's ticking. Deal goes away at 12 noon. Could I see those yearbooks? They have to be returned. I'll take good care. Pull over to the station, I'll have them brought out. Carefully, the whole page, one picture at a time. You mean her? Cheryl Gaines, high school junior, Sherry for short. Uh, I'm not sure. But it could be. Well, it could be, but I'm not sure. Junior, senior, what does it matter? She's dead. Look at the date on the cover. Look at the date. If that was her, you met in August 1972. This was taken one year later. Hello? Hi. I didn't know if you'd be in. I took a chance. Oh, hi. Is that your van? I thought I'd introduce myself. Uh, please, come on in. Thanks. So, how old are your kids? 10 and 13, a boy and a girl. You? Oh, just one. 11, a boy. Uh, the grammar schools... Oh. Actually, I'm not... not from across the street. You're not? No. I got your name from the reunion committee. Tremont High School, graduating class 1973. Sherry Waller is your name. And maiden name, Sherry Gaines, right? Uh, that's right, yeah. Uh, do I know you? Were we in the same class? No. But you met my husband once, years ago. I don't see how... He was a passenger in a car, a Cadillac. Picked you up on the road to Eugene, Oregon in 1972. The driver's name was Wayne Kennedy. He died. Actually, he was killed later that same night. Look, um, whoever you are... Barbara. Barbara Trainer. My husband's name is Denny. He was just arrested and charged with the murder of Wayne Kennedy. I need... 
need your help. Well, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. Your parents were teachers in Sacramento, uh, math and English, isn't that correct? You have the wrong person. And, and I think I'd like What happened on that mountain, Sherry? If you don't leave right now, I'm calling the police. A strange woman shows up at your door and starts firing questions about a murder that happened 27 years ago. I'm going back to see her tomorrow morning. If she has me arrested, and you're my attorneys, I expect you to get me out. No, don't, don't tell Danny. Not until I'm sure. Excuse me, ma'am. Are you following me? Mrs. Waller called to Marco's office last night. I flew in early this morning. It's her. She made a full statement. She's going back with me to Oregon to repeat her statement on videotape. Did you speak to her? Barbara, it's not good news. You were there. Yes. Tell me. I don't know what you've been told. You tell me. Your husband shot him. In self-defense. No. Wayne was stripped to the waist, on his knees, and begging for his life. Based on this testimony, the DA is withdrawing the plea bargain. He's up the charges of first degree murder. I'm sorry about this. For you. I really am. You found her. Well, I tried to dismiss her testimony on the stand. It was it was years ago. She was frightened. I mean, she wasn't exactly close enough to see what was going on, and she's had plenty of opportunities to come forward in the past and never did. It's not a lost cause. Mr. Trainer. Uh, Mr. Trainer, do you understand what we're saying? She's alive. That's right. Now, as soon as I get a transcript of her statement, I'd like you to look it over and see if you can comment. Do you think you can do that? He's in some kind of psychological shock. I want to have him examined by a doctor. You're taping Sherry's statement. We have permission to observe. Let's go. I got free and I ran out of the car and into the woods. He ran after me. I could hear him. After a while, I couldn't hear him anymore, so... So I stopped. Go on, you're doing fine. I thought... 
I was afraid that I was going to get lost and, and freeze to death. So, so I just, I started moving toward the car. When you got to the edge of the clearing, what did you see? Wayne was stripped to the waist and on his knees and, and begging for his life. What did you do? I crawled a little bit further. Being very quiet. And then, and then I heard a sound near me. Something hitting the branches. So I, I kept moving until I couldn't see or hear anything anymore. I'll arrange for that doctor. Do you want to be present? Denny said Wayne Kennedy was living with a woman at the time. You're right, it was in one of the documents. Can we get her address? Sure. Hi. Is there anything special I can help you with? I called earlier. I'm Barbara Trainer. I guess this is a good time. I'll just... You said you lived with Wayne Kennedy for two years. Oh. What do you do for a living? Odd jobs. Mainly he was a thief. I was very young and very stupid. At least he was chasing other girls half the time. Well, I'm interested in those other girls. What was he like with them? He liked them young. Actually, he was just a guy trying to be part of the 60s. It wasn't his era, but he wanted to take the ride. Do you think he ever forced them? I know for a fact he forced one or two of them. And then he scared them so they wouldn't talk. It was probably just as he died on that mountain. He was up there before? It was one of his spots, his hunting grounds. Did you ever see him with a big silver handgun, a forty-five automatic? Oh, yeah. You mean his stopper? You missed all the fun. Frick and Frack were here with the doctor to find out if I was nuts. Felt like standing on my head so he didn't waste a trip. I'm not nuts. You were crying. I never saw you cry like that before. Because she was alive. Because I didn't kill her. You tried to save her. Yeah, later. Too late. Earlier I had a chance, and I blew it. And all these years, I've hated myself for being a coward. Worse, a failure. And now, I find out I'm not. At least not completely. So, whatever happens now, I'm grateful for that. And you did that. You gave me that. What do you mean? You had the chance. <laughs> You're so fast. <laughs> stop. Please. No, stop. Wayne, weren't we going to go inside? Yeah. We're going inside. We are. We're going inside. Howdy. Can we get a couple of uh, pints of your very best 
cheap whiskey? Sure. I'm not gonna have a problem with you, am I? What do you mean? Sweet cherry. She wants it. And I am just the guy to give it to her. She's not for you, Wayne. What are you kidding? She's been flirting with me the whole way. Drinking my booze, taking my ride. Now, it's payback time. <laughs> you get in my way, and your ass is gonna be out on the highway. You can forget Seattle, okay? Um, a couple of ice cream bars? Uh -oh. I'm sorry, kid. No, <laughs> I'm just a dirty old man. I get around these young, free loving hippie chicks and I just go <laughs> crazy. I almost split. A friend scares me. He's not my friend. You're not interested in him? Him? What should I do? Should I get out of here? No. No, you don't want to be out on your own this late. Best thing to do is just stick with us, at least until we hit the next town. You, um, you won't let him try anything. Please. I, I promise. Hello, oh, sweetheart. She was so young, so vulnerable. I look at our own daughter now. What if it happened to her? I could have stopped it before it started. I should have been smarter. I should have been stronger. shouldn't have been so damn helpless. You were a kid. You had just one frightening moment to make a decision. All these years, I felt responsible for her life. I mean, it's funny, isn't it? Now she's coming back to take mine. I don't know why I should talk to you. I never wanted to get dragged into this. It won't take long. I first met Denny, my husband, in 1978. He was working as a traveling salesman, selling farming equipment. After we got married, even after two kids, we never stopped traveling. I thought it was his nature. Why are you telling me this? Because it wasn't his nature. Danny wasn't looking for something he was running from that night on Shadow Mountain. I'm leaving. You and Danny were running from the same thing. The same night, two kids got mixed up with someone truly evil and couldn't cope. Well, you're not kids anymore. Wayne Kennedy is long gone. It's time to stop running. I told the truth, some of the truth. You don't want the rest of it to come out in court. You deserve a chance to tell your family yourself. I 
never told anyone. Anyone. That's why I couldn't come for it, because I was ashamed. I got in that car and I drank their wine. And I dressed sexy so I would get rides. I have no one, no one to blame except for myself. My husband said the same thing. You're both wrong. Wayne Kennedy did it, not you. She still saw Denny murder Kennedy. In self-defense. Sherry saw and heard only two shots. Sherry didn't have the right angle to see Wayne's gun. She saw and heard the first and third shots. The first and second were simultaneous. Your husband said he threw the other gun into the trees. We searched that whole area with metal detectors. There was no gun. Sure there was. It wasn't there, Sherry. There was a gun that night, but it wasn't there the next day when you searched. When you asked her, Sherry said she was moving away from the clearing, crawling. She heard something crash through the underbrush near her. The gun. Where is it, Sherry? What did you do with it? gun. His fingerprints on the trigger, no one else's, one bullet fired from the clip. I mean, some forensic expert might even be able to match Denny's scar with the type of bullet. It corroborates everything. So they're dropping the charges? Any minute. Even if DeMarco wanted to take it to trial, it doesn't matter. Sherry's our witness now. It's over. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, there must have been a hundred times over the years that I wanted to tell you everything. And every time I kept convincing myself there was some good reason not to. But the truth was I was afraid. Of what? Of losing you. How bad have I hurt us? I've got someone here who would like to say something to you. Thank you. Well, I don't deserve that. You tried your best. Yeah. It was a long time ago.
Look at you. Oh, oh. <laughs> How are you? Good. Oh, let me look at you. Hey, pal. Everything's okay now, right? Everything is perfect. Come on, Kurt. Come here.